What a launch, right? You might have seen some feedback, some mixed feedback on the 9700X, especially with regard to the value. To love it or hate it, uh, but I'm gonna give you a little bit more context as to why I think it can absolutely make sense, especially from an SFF context. Welcome to Machines More. Hope you saw my launch review for the 9700X at face value. The multi-core performance that came in only a tiny bit better than the 7700X, under 2%. Uh, game performance at 1080 is about 5%. So by these metrics, you might wonder why this makes sense. And that's what we're going to clarify today. And, you know, first off, it has to be power normalized. But uh, you, you might have seen some math along the lines of, while the 9700X is $360, the 7700X, it's 280 So it's, what, 29% more expensive, but definitely doesn't get you 29% more performance. So this one is a dead end proposition. And I touched on this in my review. That's not actually the right way to analyze it because the CPU alone, you know, this guy doesn't do much other than that, as a paperweight. It's just sitting here, right? Otherwise, by that logic, we should all be building with Ryzen 5600s. They're a third of the price of the 9700X, but you definitely get at least a third of the performance in every dimension, right? So to dig a little bit deeper, let's just walk through a sample build and we'll go through, you know, with something like what I have here in the Terra. And I'll be leaving links for these uh, components down below if you want to reference it, uh, you can uh, check it out that way. So in my build here, I've got an L12S by 77, which as you'll see shortly, will actually let me overclock the 9700X a little bit. But for our sample here, we'll just keep things simple. ID Cooling's IS67 XT will work with the 9700X. It's only 35 bucks, so it's a pretty good deal. Mobo, I like the MSI B650i or the ASUS B650EI, but the MSI like what I have here is cheaper. Take note, these board prices might be coming down soon when the 800 series ones land. 32 gigs, uh, of course, their Vengeance 6000 megahertz. It's a good kit, good capacity. You can also go Kingston Fury. Just pick what's better price and what you think looks better. One terabyte, M.2 is a good place to get started. Samsung's 980 Pro is solid, $90. And for this build, I have a Founders Edition 4070 uh, because of the thinner size. I can pair with the Noctua L12S by 77. These aren't available worldwide, so we'll just throw in this ASUS Dual OC uh, 4070. It's got the same cooler as the 4070 Super I used in the last Terra build video I did. And the case, like we mentioned, Fractal Terra, it's actually a really good price now. Uh, it's 130 bucks, it must be on sale usually 170-ish. PSU for this particular setup, the peak is going to be somewhere less than 350 watts. So to stay efficient and quiet, a 750 watt unit would be ideal. And you could certainly run a 600 watt unit or 650 watt unit, but I just checked Amazon and the SF600, strangely high price. So I'm not sure if they're getting phased out or something. Anyhow, uh, SF750 is a very good unit. I've also got the Lanley SP750 in here. Good unit too. Uh, we've got a Be Quiet Silent Wings 4. Just that one case fan at the bottom. Should be a good choice for a just a you know, general build here. Uh, so scrolling back up to the CPU. And the 9700X is $359. That's less pricing right now. And for our comparisons, you have to be careful uh, when comparing and benchmarking the 9700X to say the previous gen 7700X because the 9700X is a 65 watt TDP part and that means 88 watts package power stock while the 7700X will draw a lot more than 135 watts if you give it adequate cooling. Now, I definitely won't draw 135 watts with cooling like what we've discussed and definitely not in this case. Uh, some of you have mentioned the non X7700 and I would agree wholeheartedly. Uh, it's a solid CPU and $280 now. It's the proper comparison. Okay, and it's basically a 7700X running on eco mode or 65 watt TDP with a 100 megahertz lower top end boost clock. And I compared to a 7700X eco uh, for some of my benchmarks in my launch review. So 
One other thing is the 7700 comes with a Wraith Prisma stock cooler, a higher uh, level one, uh, which will not work in here. So let's just say you're resourceful and you can sell it for $20 on eBay or something. So just call that one 260, right? Another eight core part to consider for a strict gaming build, of course, would be the 7800X 3D, which is just a little bit more than the 9700X is right now. So all three CPUs will work well with the other parts. Um, this one ends up being a 1756, and that's going to be roughly 6% more than the $1,658 7700 build, and a little bit less than the 1764 uh, 7800X 3D build. So with the 9700X and 7700, you have you know, both are going to be powerful gaming and productivity type of SFF builds here. Use case for these type of builds, uh, you should have a productivity plus gaming need for it. So uh, you're going to want the eight cores to do something with, right? If all you want is a productivity focus, then you should go for a higher core count chip. And for just gaming, the 7800X 3D with the extra 64 megabytes uh, of V cache, of vertical cache, is what I would recommend for a highest end. A gaming only or gaming focus system. So the productivity capability will suffer a little bit or a lot bit there depending on what you're doing. But if you're on a budget, the 7600 is also really good too. But yeah, for Ryzen without getting too technical, the eight core parts, because all eight cores are part of the same CCD or core complex die, and the max you can get on a single CCD now is eight cores. Theoretically, the eight core parts will have the best gaming performance other than the 16 core 7950X or 9950X type of CPUs, which you know will give similar performance and that's just outside the scope of most budgets and the cooling capability of this case. So uh, the TLDR, eight core Ryzen CPUs will de deliver the best balance of productivity and gaming in an SFF case where you'll often be limited by the cooler size. So I'll simulate the results from a 7700 by just using my 7700X at a 88 watt PPT because the 7700X will have a slightly higher boost clock ceiling for the single core and gaming results. Just be aware it will be slightly worse in practice. Running through a more pared down set of benchmarks than the launch review. One thing I mentioned in that review, you have to compare apples to apples. The CPUs, they absolutely need to be at similar power levels to get the right inference. The multi-core performance of the 9700X is going to be about 15% versus the 7800X 3D. And so lightly uh, threaded applications can go up to 30%. <laughs> and the 9700X is going to run at a lower temp. Here, the L12S by 77 cooling fan settled in at about 100 RPM lower and 75 degrees compared to the throttle temp of 95 degrees is still a very big gap. And that just means that uh, one, if you wanna push the CPU a little bit more in this scenario, you absolutely can. Whereas the 7800X 3D is, uh, that's pretty much it because it's set up to throttle at 89 degrees. Adjusting the power targets to match where a set stock 7700X drops to at full load in this case and cooler combo, which comes out to be about 115 watts. We're not touching any curve optimizer, just a really high level quick demo here. TDC and EDC, I'll leave on auto. Um, that may cause us to not get the actual power limit, but we should be pretty close. And, and so here I was seeing a decent bump up in performance. It's also about 12% versus the 7700X at similar power levels and the time to completion dropped more than 13% on the Blender render time. Temps are a bit better than the stock 7700X and we're not knowing what it would have actually hit had it not been throttled. But if you want some buffer, I would drop it down to say 98 watts. That'll still get you a performance bump while maintaining relatively manageable temps. And if you're curious, the approximate V core I'm gonna say these are entirely safe values. The 7700X at stock after power dropped to 115 watts, you know, for reference was 1.19 volts. So two, if you're not able to overclock it, knowing that there's a decent buffer for temps here means that if you are more height limited because you went with a bigger GPU or a bigger GPU cooler, uh, like that dual OC and you had to go with a smaller cooler like the IS67 XT, you'll be fine as well. So if you care about the gaming performance, which I think you should if you're considering these eight core parts, in a scenario where the GPU is less of the limiting factor, such as when I tested a 1080p on a 4080 Super, 
My gaming Geo main for the full benchmark suite showed a 5% or so bump from the 7800X 3D versus the 9700X and also a roughly 5% gap between the 9700X and 7700X for these pared down benchmarks. I'm still just using the stock 7700X. Again, keeping in mind the 7700 will have ever so slightly worse gaming performance than the 7700X because it has a 100 megahertz lower max boost. In this build, the 4070 is already a very good GPU, and for a title like Far Cry 6 at 1080, where the performance is very sensitive to the CPU, the gap between the 7800X3 and the 9700X, it's about 7% here. And then you've got a whopping 21% gap to the 7700X. So this is the one of the more extreme titles. There's gonna be titles like Assassin's Creed Mirage, where you hit more of the GPU limit with a 4070. So there's very little separating any of these here. For MSFS 2020, the X3D's extra vCache gives it a big advantage. But even though the 9700X has the same cache size as the 7700X, its L3 cache has expanded bandwidth and lower latency, and that can translate to a big edge in a title like this, even when the GPU you're using is only uh, 4070. And versus the 7700X, the 9700X has a 10% boost here. So ultimately the benefit you will see for gaming depends on what title you play. And you also have to consider what resolution you game at and the quality settings. With a 4080 Super going up to 1440p, the gap between the 7800X 3D and the 9700X was only 1.5% on the Geo Means average FPS. Between the 9700X and 7700X, about 3.5%. So my general, you know, title unspecific assessment would be at best, you'll see a 5% or 5 to 6% gap going from the 7700 to a 9700X and a similar 5% going to the 7800X 3D. So as long as your use case has some productivity, CPU-based demand, rendering, photo, video editing, CAD, then I think the 9700X is actually gonna be a better choice than the 7800X 3D. Uh, for lightly threaded applications, the gap is big and the multi-threaded stuff at least 15%. If it's a pure gaming build and you really haven't the care in the world about the non-gaming performance, that's when I would go 7800X 3D. Um, here a 7600 would make a lot of sense for a budget build considering it's only $180 now. So let's revisit the baseline we set at the beginning. The 9700X build, it's about 6% more than the 7700. And you're easily getting at least that much more for productivity benchmarks for both multi-threaded and lightly threaded applications. And the gaming increment can be right around that gap. So absolutely 9700X can be a reasonable choice over a 7700 build if this type of use case and performance is what you are after. So the right way to think about this is the incremental cost. So maybe let's call it $100 here, uh, whatever it is. Is that expenditure getting me something that is worthwhile? For some of you, the answer will be no. And for some, it'll be yeah. And I think both are justifiable conclusions based on these numbers. The generational gap is not as great as it often was in the past. And the conclusion by launch review and the point of this video isn't that, oh, you should only consider the 9700X. It's like the only uh, great CPU for an SFF system. No, um, it's that the 9700X is a good and efficient eight core CPU for a combined gaming and productivity system. And the value can make sense in the right circumstance. Um, of course, the thing standing in AMD's way is itself, right? Specifically, it's past-gen CPUs with the bigger price drop. And I suppose if you're AMD, that's a good problem to have. Overall, both the 9700X and non-X7700 would be fantastic CPUs for cases like this. And I'll do a full build video soon in one of these. And uh, we'll also try out some uh, smaller coolers like this and see if it'll it'll fly with the nice MRX. So yeah, make sure you're subscribed. Please give a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Links down below. Thanks for watching.